sandwich between two pies. Back of the Packers, Windelich. Quick handball to Hocking. Back to Lovett Murray. He goes short. It's a mark to Zaharakis. Zaharakis has kicked the goal. The Bombers are in front of the G. It's time to strap in and get ready. The leaders in AFL Supercoach are incoming. Helping you win your leagues and climb up the rankings. You're now listening to the Insight AFL Show with your hosts, Big Horse, Skitty, and Herbie. G'day and welcome to the Insight AFL Show. I am the horse and I am flying solo today. Today we're going to review all things Supercoach from round zero which include hot players, all the players you want on your side, the cold players, or players we think are worth fading, and we'll also get a look at the medical room to see which players are injured, doubtful, for round one. But before we start, if you haven't yet, please hit like and subscribe and put the bell on down below. Triple bang that shit. And also jump in our Discord. Inside Unlimited is live and for less than 50 cents per week. And as the old adage goes, a zinger box, upsized, extra burger on the side, that's all it's going to cost you. You'll get access to everything we do. Our insights, our trades, our captains, exclusive premium Q&A content, every round of Supercoach, and a few other cool perks. Entry to our Discord will always be free if you wanted to get involved in the community and just talk Supercoach and fantasy sport. Our $25, $50, and $100 cash leagues are now running. We've only got a couple of spots left in a couple of those leagues. So if you're interested in taking part, please comment below or hit us up on Discord. The link will be below in the comments. Our Unlimited League as well. 913351. I repeat, 913351. It's free to enter. And two cool things. One, if you get the top score each week, you win a standard squeeze prize pack. Thanks to the guys at the standard squeeze who have been with us since day one. And also, if you're the winner overall at the end of the season, you get a Supercoach Champions Ring. And that's been donated to us by our sponsors at Supercoach Rings. So get a look at that. That's beautiful. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all four games, a few players who were hot, a few players that were cold, and just touch on some potential traps or how we're going to go about it. So the first game that we've got is going to be Sydney versus Brisbane. So Sydney breakthrough for the first win of the season in the first ever round zero. So that, that'll no doubt come up in a Triv Master or a Trivia night somewhere along the line, 86 to 64. We start off with Isaac Heaney. Lined up at the first centre bounce and played 56% of the game on the ball. 18 contested touches, 13 clearances. So this is what he's capable of. But in the past, because of Mills, because of Parker, because of these sorts of players, Kennedy, when he was around, there wasn't much of a chance for him and he played predominantly as a forward. Now with Parker injured and not back till, I think, round five or round six, Mills is out till mid-season. In the past, I think that this was a trap, but I think this is a bit of an insight as to how Sydney planned on running him this year. So for me, at four, just south of, or well, just north of 450K, sorry, which is, I guess, for our forward lines a premium and a bit of a danger, but if this role sticks, he could be a really nice cash cow. My idea, we're going to drop our team, Skitty and I, we're going to drop our teams on Wednesday night this week and alive, but... My idea at the moment is I may run with Isaac Heaney for the first four or five weeks and see how he's going up until they're by. And then depending on how he's going, go sideways to a Luke Jackson or see which other primo is playing well and go from there. Chad Warner, he was good in the last quarter but was quiet for the first two and a half quarters, 118 super coach points. Not a bad pod but a bit risky. If it wasn't for that last quarter, he would have ended up on around 80. Brody Grundy, he struggled early but worked his way into the game well. 139 super coach points and clearly Sydney's number one ruck. There has been talk about people fading him, me included, but after this sort of a, a performance against one of the best ruckmen in the league, it'll be hard to leave him out of your side. James Jordan, 18 touches, seven tackles. Also started slow but worked his game way into the game really, really well. Solidified his spot in my forward line. I've got him as my F3 at the moment. He did start slow, but there's a definite role there, and he's locked into Sydney's best 22. I think we're going to make a couple hundred K out of James Jordan. Matty Roberts, interesting one. 19 kicks, eight marks, but most importantly, took all the kick out, or most of the kick out, sorry. He looks locked into the Swans' best 22, which was evidenced by Jake Lloyd moving up onto the wing. Only 76 super coach points, but 
I think this is about the average of what we're going to get out of Matty Roberts. 156K midfielder. That's juicy. Come round six, pardon me, <coughs> with the um, dual positions, who they, they will first come out in round six, sorry. If he gains that dual position, he might be really nice to have coming off your bench and, and good for those buy rounds in the middle of the year if you don't sell him off early. Errol Gordon, quiet game by his standards, 20 touches, 77 super coach points. We'll almost definitely drop in price. Is he worth fading in order to get him cheaper down the track? I think yes, because he's going to need to go monster 150 plus in both his remaining games to not lose cash. And then that tricky buy is at round five for Sydney. So I think he's definitely worth a fade for now. But keep in mind that he could turn around next week and go 170s. And this is the beauty of Supercoach. You just do not know. Nick Blakey, 26 touches, nine marks. Is this the year that the Lizard breaks out? 117 Supercoach points. He looked really nice running out of the back line. The lack of anything else really hurt. So it's a it's a watch this space for me. I'm, I'm not convinced just yet. Jack Viney, 30 touches, seven tackles, two goals, four frees, four, 138 super coach points. He was clearly Melbourne's best. But this one's a bit of a tease. You've got Clayton Oliver, who's just working his way back into the game. Yeah, I think he might score like this for a couple of weeks, but once Oliver does get his legs back and he takes the majority of the inside work, then I think you'll see uh, Viney average around that 100 for the year. Christian Petraka, 26 touches, one goal, three tackles, 108 super coach points. He will improve, but again, he's another one who'll lose money. Blake Howes, yeah, I was proven wrong. Last week I came out in the podcast saying I wasn't willing to pick up someone that had three touches in three and a half quarters of footy, but this just proved me wrong. 17 touches, seven marks, 91 super coach points, really efficient. He's a really nice backline option. And yes, I've reconsidered. Throw the hate my way. He's in my side and he's sitting on my defensive bench. Clayton Oliver, 30 touches, two tackles. He'll take a few weeks to get going. 90 super coach points. People were talking about him as a potential pod to start the year. I think we can safely fade him now until his dollar bottoms out. I reckon he's probably got 50 to 60K to lose before he hits his straps. So he'll be nice at 620K. Maxi Gorn, 72 super coach points, 14 touches, six frees, four. Four tackles, four frees against. Historically a bad performer at the SCG, where he only averages 97 in his career and only twice going over 100 against the Swans at the SCG. His highest score ever at the SCG was 123 against Collingwood in 2021 when we were going through our COVID years. I don't think he's a fade. So we've got Sydney or the SCG where he averages 97 and we've got the Gabba where he averages just south of 90. And all the other grounds in Australia, he averages, oh, not all the other grounds, all the other major grounds, sorry, he averages over 115. This is his last game at the SCG for the year. I'm not too worried and I'm holding on to him. Our next game, Brisbane versus Carlton. Brisbane choked this one after being up by over seven goals, 86-85. As expected, uh, we called it early last week that Lyman was going to be the sub and sure enough he was. And he's probably killed any real chance of him making our super coach side come round one. Kitty Coleman, unlucky, as well as Sam Doherty. They'll come up in a later uh, episode of this podcast that I'm releasing. All the best to him and Dockers, as it's been confirmed, both have done ACLs. So trade him out. Could be a nice segue into Elliot Yo if you want to try and risk it that way. Alien. You only need to find an extra 45k to go to Yo. It's not too bad with dual position as well. Lockie Neal, 112 super coach points, 25 touches, two tackles. He will get better. 112, about the average that you'll get out of Lockie Neal this year. Jared Lyons, I am bloody intrigued by this bloke. He was priced at north of 600k prior to Ashcroft's inclusion into the midfield last season. I can see him owning this role until Ashcroft is back mid year. 19 touches, 9 tackles, 106 super coach points. This is my big risk that I'm taking this year, and you'll see on Wednesday night, I currently have him as my M6. Hugh McCluggage, 18 touches, 2 tackles, 4 marks, 83 super coach points. This is what makes McCluggage extremely frustrating in the super coach world. Last week, he pumped out 100 and, what was it, 140, 150. This week, he comes crashing back to an 83. Need to see more consistency out of McCluggage before we're looking at picking him. 
Harris Andrews, really nice draft option, 118 super coach points. He just roamed loose in defense, seven marks, 15 touches, looked nice. A little bit too inconsistent for a primo, though. Harry Mackay, 13 touches, three goals, 130 super coach points. You couldn't, could you? I definitely am not. But tell you what, there's there's been some whispers around the community that works his way up the ground, does some relief ruck work, rucks in the forward line. I want to see a little bit more out of him first. Zach Williams, 19 touches, 17 kicks and had kick-out duties. He's all but killed Sard's role, and he looks good. 72 super coach points, look good, and he's locked into my side come round one. At 210K, he's only going to get better. Georgie Hewitt, this might be a nice little pod option for those of you playing and watching at home. 27 touches, five tackles, and does screen pod being owned in only 3% of teams. All right, now we're going to talk about the Supercoach World Cup, which is brought to you by the guys at the Insight Fantasy Sports podcast team. If you ever thought you're elite at Supercoach, well, now you can prove it with our year-round Insight Fantasy Sports Supercoach World Cup, featuring all four sports, NRL, AFL, NBL, and BBL. It's $10 to enter before the AFL season starts, so get in quick before the entry fee goes up. Your rankings will be calculated together and the best performer over the four sports combined will take out the best super coach player in the world. That's right, everywhere. Join our Discord to find out more and register. So next we've got Gold Coast and Richmond. So the Suns withstand a second half rally by the Tigers after a really nice start by them to win 99-60. Matty Rao, 33 touches, five tackles, four frees, and get this. 20 clearances. Wow, we. 137 super coach points. This man looks ready made for a big 2024. Our man, Magic Moments, or SC Codfather, has been raving about him all preseason, and now we see why. My only concern is 33 touches, five tackles, four frees, four, 20 clearances, which is phenomenal. And still, and I say this in a bit of jest, but only 100, 137 super coach points. So what's going to happen if he gets 10 clearances and his role's reduced to 110, 115? It's a little bit of a concern that he only managed 137 points with 20 clearances, but he does look really, really good. Sam Flanders, 26 touches, three tackles, and firmly locked into the midfield role the Suns had going. 124 super coach points and worthy of F1 consideration. So there was a graphic that got out the other day on X. I'll have to have a bit of a look to see who uh, released that. But he had 56% game time in the middle, which means he was 44% forward. My concern is that he only scored as well as he did because the Suns were going as well as what they were. But if you watch the game, when he was in the middle, the Suns actually lost ground. And it wasn't until they got the main guns back in the middle that, that they were able to arrest a bit of momentum. So the Gold Coast CBAs for that game against Richmond. So uh, Rao was in the centre bounces for 93% of the game. Took Miller, 78%. Jared Witts, 78%. Noah Anderson, 74%. Flanders only at 55% or 55.6%. And Casbolt was relieving Witts at 22%. So make what you will of that. It's a nice score here, but... This is about the top, the very top of where he'll go. Might be a nice segue, though, if you happen to go Heaney into Flanders come the buys or or Jackson when uh, Darcy comes back into Flanders. We'll talk about it more on Wednesday night. Will Powell, 28 touches, 20 of them kicks, nine marks, and looks legit. He's the new Jaden Short. Dimmer is moulding him beautifully, and he uses the ball really well. 123 super coach points, and he's a cheeky watch for me. No, Anderson continues to rack up the pill at will. 25 touches, nine marks, 122 super coach points. Took Miller, 28 touches, six marks. And from watching, he was burnt a lot on the overlap. So if you go, for those of you that are interested, if you go back and have a look at the game, he could have had an extra 10 touches. His work rate is phenomenal, but he was burnt on that overlap run a lot. And that this score... 116 points that he got could have easily been 135 to 140 if he was fed the pill on the overlap. So he's my still my pick of the midfielders at the Suns. Alex Sexton started slow, 21 touches, eight marks, 73 super coach points. He's locked into my forward line and will start on field. There's no worries there. Richmond put some time into him, which helped out 
Connor Bedarek, who we'll talk about now. 21 touches, 8 marks, 94 supercoach points. Unsure of whether he can replicate this week in and week out because Richmond did put a lot of work in the Sexton and almost to a point tagged him. And it freed Bedarek up, especially early. But once Richmond started getting back into the game, they sort of released a little bit on Sexton. He started to work his way into the game too. Jaden Shaw, this is a really nice pod pick here. 23 touches, 20 kicks, kick out duties. I think the ball's going to live a lot in Richmond's back line this year. Clearly, Richmond loved the ball in his hands, 130 super coach points, and still in only 3% of teams. That screams point of difference. Nick Vloston, 20 touches, 9 marks, 118 super coach points. As I said with Jaden Short, I feel like the Tigs are, are going to score well in the back line this year if this game was anything to go by. Sammy Naismith, firmly locked into my R3. 11 touches, 25 hitouts, 93 super coach points. Played his role well in his first game back at the elite level for almost 1,400 days. I like him at R3. Cash Gen should be really nice too. Josh Gipkis, nine touches, two marks, 76 super coach points. Got a lot of points, whether from intercept possessions or spoils. He'll easily make us 200K before we have to move him on. At 150K, really nice spot to have him start as your D5 or D6. Timmy Taranto, 15 touches, 49 super coach points. He really did look underdone, and his price will drop considerably, especially given that he's almost 600K. Shy Bolton, only eight touches for the day. Saved his score by kicking three goals straight, 72 super coach points. The last game, GWS versus Collingwood. GWS put their foot down after quarter time. The win comfortably, 114 to 82. And for those of you that watched or have seen it on social media, I do not know what Mason Cox was thinking trying to take on Mummy before the game, doing a ruck or intercepting their ruck clearance drill before the game had started. You are a knobhead, Mason, but, you know, it's all in good fun. Tom Green, 30 touches, four marks, six tackles, and this man was everywhere. 132 super coach points, and I think you have to get him in early, regardless of the buy. You're just going to have to work out how to cover him for the buy because his price is going to increase, and he will be a top eight mid by season's end. Lockie Ash, 25 touches, 7 marks, 4 tackles, 131 super coach points. If he can play consistent footy this year, he could be a sneaky option for later in the year. Stephen Canilio, 28 touches, 5 marks, 111 super coach points. This is about the norm that you'll get out of Cogs, but probably not enough in order to pick him to start the year in your mids. Lockie Whitfield, very interesting this one, 33 touches, 14 marks. He turned the ball over a little bit and still had 108 super coach points. I'll be watching for that buy round if he continues this sort of form. He very well may make it into my side. And along with this guy, Harry Himmelberg, 24 touches, five marks, 101 super coach points. Extremely tasty. Toby Green, he was quiet. 15 touches, one goal. He was well held by Maynard, 63 super coach points. Callum Brown, the Irishman, 11 touches, seven marks, five goals, 100, 103 super coach points. Sorry. But just as likely to pump out a 40 next week. But this bloke is exciting to watch. Kicked a really nice goal on the run against the win from 55 out in the first quarter too. And for those of you that didn't see it, I encourage you to go and watch a D GWS uh, press conference with BT after the game where they interview, I believe it was his dad and a family friend who hadn't been or hadn't seen their boy in about 10 years and how happy they were and the way they spoke highly of him. It's a really good watch. Nick Dacos, 34 touches, four tackles, 131 super coach points in a losing side, proved his worth and is a must-have player come round one. The commentators probably get a little bit too excited with Dacos, especially when he just nails a 15-metre kick and it almost sounds like they're blowing their load at how good he is. But this man will be close to the number one player in Supercoach this year, I believe. Darcy Cameron, 20 touches, 30 hitouts to go along with two goals, 133 Supercoach points. Started off the year like this last year, then went quiet. Buyer, beware. Joshy Dacos, 28 touches, six marks, five tackles. Another nice game by the older Dacos. Will be a consistent 100-point scorer this year, but at 550K, it's a no at this price. Pat Lipinski, sorry, really interesting. 26 touches, 87 super coach points. He actually looked really good. At 389K, could he be worth a punt? It's definitely worth a look. Jordan Dugowie, 21 touches, shocking efficiency, going at under 50% for 43 super coach points. Price will almost certainly drop. He had an absolute dog of a day. Our next segment is going to be brought to you by Ryan from Astute Newstead. Are you wanting to buy that first home or even an investment property and don't know how? Are you current owner with interest rates over 6.2%? 
Ryan can guarantee you that there are better options for you. And the best part is he'll do it for free for you. Reach out to RyanH at EganWealth.com at Facebook or on Instagram at Hammond, SHL underscore Astute or on his phone number 0431766784. All right. So we're going to get into some hot guys here. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. All right. So Isaac Heaney. Lined up at the first centre bounce, played 56% of the game on the pill, 18 contested touches, 13 clearances. He's my pick of the week, 144 super coach points, and he's almost worthy of a pickup before round one, as his price will increase dramatically if he keeps up this sort of form. Matty Rao, 137 super coach points, 20 clearances, 33 touches. This man looks ready for a big super coach season. Tommy Green, 30 touches, four marks, six tackles. He was everywhere, 132 super coach points, and I think you have to get him early regardless of the buy. You're just going to have to work out that coverage. Jaden Short, 23 touches, as we said earlier, 20 kicks with kick-out duties. Clearly, Richmond loved the ball in his hands. A sneaky pod, 3% only owned this man at the moment. And Brody Grundy struggled early but worked his way into the game really well. 139 super coach points and clearly Sydney's number one ruck. I don't think you can fade this man in the, what is he, 460-odd K. He's going to make you a bucket ton of cash. And you could always upgrade to English if you wanted to down the track. Let's get into our cold guys. The iciest man for the round is Jordan Degoe. Apologies to all Collingwood supporters out there, but he had an absolute stinker. 21 touches, shocking efficiency going under 53%, 43 super coach points. He just had a dog of a day. But given his price and the 43 super coach points, his price will drop. So watch. And if you're looking at getting him in, we'll go round four, round five. Potentially after his buy, it might be a nice time to get him in. Tim Taranto as well, 15 touches, 49 super coach points. At 600K, he looks underdone and may drop a lot of coin and might be a nice pick for later in the year. Shy Bolton, only eight touches, but 72 super coach points. That was saved by his three goals, zero points. Or at 500 and, what is he, 550K? That's a big no for me. Paddy Cripps, 23 touches, 15 handballs. Which might sound like a lot, but only 84 super coach points. Not great for a primo mid. His score does fluctuate too much for him to be trusted as a primo to start the year. And Adam Saad, 15 touches, six marks, 69 super coach points. With Williams taking the kickouts, his role looks almost irrelevant now and not super coach trustworthy. Let's get into the medical room. Unfortunately, we had two ACLs in the one game this round with Sam Doherty and Caden Coleman going down. You bloody hate to see it. But best of luck to these guys on the road to recovery, especially Doherty. Like, he's been through a lot in the last couple of years. ACLs, uh, testicular cancer, you name it. The man's overcome it. It's a shit go, but if there's anyone that's going to get over it and come back stronger than ever, it's going to be this guy. So along with Coleman... From the guys here at the Inside Fantasy Sports podcast team and our viewers, best of luck in your recovery, lads. Darcy Parrish, for those of you that don't know, was pulled off the track late last week due to hamstring tightness and he's only a 50-50% chance of playing in round one against the Hawks. If you've got him in your side, just be careful and be ready to pivot. Callum Ward from GWS hurt his shoulder in a tackle laid by Bo McCurry during GWS's win on Saturday night. Diagnosis of the severity is not yet out, but he looks set to miss some time. So this may help the likes of Jacob Weir with his job security. And Jake Bailey from Melbourne has injured his collarbone, looks stiff for a cent on the sidelines. Six to eight weeks, they're saying. It could be a broken collarbone. So this absolutely strengthened houses job security down there. 123K defender. You've almost got to have him now. Now, guys, that's going to do us for today. It's, this is what we're going to do each week. Just a quick wrap-up of Supercoach relevant, irrelevant people, who's hot, who's cold, the medical room, to give you guys at home a bit of an understanding as to what's going on during whichever round it is that we're covering. Again, please like, subscribe, put the bell on, triple bang that shit. We love it when we get all the viewers in, asking questions. Jump in the Discord. The link will be below. Myself, Skitty, and the lads were in there almost 24-7 answering questions, and if we're not, we're probably sleeping. But there's also a really nice community in there that know their stuff. 
We're about to finalise our community team as well. So if you'd like some input into that, the NBL guys went top 100. The BBL guys went top, was it 200 it was? So they definitely know their stuff, our community. So if you want to be involved and you don't have to listen to me, you don't have to listen to Skitty, but the other guys that are in there, we have the number one player for NBL Supercoach who won the grand prize a couple of weeks ago. He's in our chat as well. I am DVG, the man. So if, even if you want to shoot him some questions basketball related, go nuts. But please join us Wednesday night, 7.30. We're going live. We're going to cover who you should pick, who you shouldn't, who to fade, who to look out for, injuries and more. But for now, I'm the horse, and this has been another episode of the Insight Fantasy Sports AFL podcast. See ya.